Hey, what's up, Street Talks? There, I came from there. I came Street Photography Blog. Another super beautiful, gorgeous day in Mexico City. If you're curious, I'm currently staying in the Del Torres neighborhood. It's just mostly industrial. It's uh, like lots of uh, car repair shops. Apparently, there's some people who say this neighborhood shady, but don't listen to them. I think it's uh, it's totally fine. So, I wanted to make a video with some quick. You know travel photography tips travel street photography tips or just tips while living abroad and i'm just gonna be a a jumble of just random thoughts and things and maybe it's just gonna be advice i wish i could have gave myself if i did this uh travel photography thing uh, all over again okay so the first and foremost thing is when it comes to traveling and photography i would actually say that photography is not the most important thing photography is it's obviously important, but it's not the most important thing. What I mean by that is this. I think with travel photography or, you know, with travel in general, to me, it's giving you the unique opportunity to really step outside your comfort zone, to talk to strangers, to interact with people you might other not, otherwise not interact with, and kind of give you a chance to get away from the craziness of back home and actually give you some proper time to think, to reflect, to to meditate. And I would actually say that um, when it comes to uh, traveling and shooting street photography, it's really important to find a neighborhood that you really like, gravitate to that neighborhood, and spend a lot of time in that neighborhood. In terms of uh, photography equipment, if you would just want to focus on uh, photography and just want to keep it super simple, I'll just recommend a Ricoh GR version 2. Get that with the air cam uh, wrist strap or neck strap and then you're going to be set and or if you want to do video uh, i'm currently using the lumix g9 which i really like for a combination of photo and video and i see a lot of photographers doing more like uh, video vlogging and i think that's also uh, another good option and if possible i would actually say i mean this is maybe a little bit counterintuitive what i said in the past but I actually do think that while you're abroad, if possible, it's good to process your your footage and edit your footage uh, quickly. So generally, what I like to, what I like to do is, you know, I'll do a lot of shooting, whether it be photo, video, and stuff like that. And then, if you're at an Airbnb or a hotel with a, a Wi-Fi or internet connection, quickly go through your images and then upload them to YouTube or share them on your own website, blog, or whatever it may be. And I generally, or you could just go to a coffee shop if they have free Wi-Fi and do that. The reason is this, is that I think when you go back home, it's gonna be so easy to get a huge backlog of video footage and uh, photos, and then it's good to share your experiences while it's fresh. And it's not just sharing your photos and videos, but also write out your thoughts. Write them on your own website, your own blog. And I encourage you to not just share everything to Facebook or, or Instagram because there's not going to be that much uh, archival ability in the long run. Or if you just want to do something more personal, you could just write things in a notebook. Also, another practical tip is, depending on what country you're traveling to, um, there are certain uh, company, uh, countries that have faster Wi-Fi connections and slower Wi-Fi connections. And I've actually been hugely benefited by, in photography, just shooting JPEGs. And whenever possible, you don't even have to shoot the highest resolution JPEG. Like for example, on the Lumix G9, I think it's like a 20 megapixel sensor. And I just, I just been shooting medium sized JPEGs. And for black and white, I've been using the dynamic film monochrome um, preset on the, on the camera and it's been working really well and the benefit of shooting just medium jpegs is that it downloads to my uh, my my computer faster i can look through the photos quicker and also the biggest thing is i could upload them to my website or dropbox or whatever way faster and the same thing with um even video for a while i was trying to do 4k but the file sizes of things are just insane and unfortunately internet connectivity speeds unless you're in vietnam where the internet's insanely fast and amazing uh, internet speeds for the most part aren't able to keep up with 4k unfortunately so I would say um, when you're traveling and doing photography video you could even stick to 720p 1080p doesn't really matter all that much what I just think is more important is for you to document uh, interesting experiences that you find personally meaningful uh, some other tips while you're traveling and shooting street photography abroad uh, I would just say uh, a good tip is to go to the local park I've been going to the local park because 
Walking through the park, it's actually super zen, and also I'll get my workouts done at the park. So usually at the at the park, there's like a chin-up bar, and there's a dip bar, and even when I'm in an Airbnb, I'm just doing push-ups and stuff like that. And I do think that by remaining uh, physically strong and exercising yourself, you're actually going to have more physiological strength for you to explore and wander the city, and um, that'll give you a lot more uh, opportunities to explore. Another practical tip is, Almost all my clothes, I'm just wearing black merino wool at this point. Uh, they're pretty expensive. My uh, One of my really good friends, uh, Kevin, he got me these for my birthday. It's from outlier.nyc. They're merino wool black shirts. They're about like $100 a pop. They're pretty expensive. But it's literally the only two shirts I've been wearing when I've been traveling and living abroad. Um, you could wear them uh, several days in a row. They don't sweat. And if you just want to wash them, just wash them in the shower with a... Uh, with water. I think for the most part, if you want to travel, travel light. The thing that usually weighs us uh, mostly down when you're traveling is too much clothing. So if you just get two black pairs of any clothes items, you're fine. So even for my socks, um, outlier.nyc black merino wool socks. Uh, in, in the evening, I just wash them. When I'm taking a shower, I just wash them with shampoo, wring them and hang dry them for the next morning. Um, you know, for pants, you could either just use black merino wool leggings or just black jeans, I think is generally fine for traveling. Especially if you're traveling somewhere that's not too humid, like here in Mexico City, it's perfectly warm and dry. So I've actually been fine with jeans. And for our boxers, I've been boxer briefs. I've been wearing these forever. The uh, ex officio boxer briefs, just two pairs of those. These things are amazing. And also some other tips. Um, if you're doing uh, travel photography, video vlogging, Actually, um, so I'm currently recording this on a microphone. I don't know. I don't know if a microphone's really that useful. Even when I'm out in the streets, carrying around a microphone is just too clunky. So, I mean, if possible, try not to carry superfluous equipment and gear that you might not like. Um, also, I would recommend is while you're doing uh, travel photography, um, don't always feel like you have to be out in the streets shooting. Spend some time, you know. Uh, sit down at a coffee shop, uh, read some books on your, your phone or tablet or whatever it may be. Use some time to think and reflect. And also another tip is when you're traveling and shooting photography, street photography, don't expect to make photos that are going to totally change your life. I think I made the, the sucker mistake, I, you know, the first time I actually backpacked through Europe, I'm like in Paris for the first time. Oh my God, I'm going to make the most amazing photos. I'm going to be like the next Henri Cartier Bresson, whatever. And I was massively disappointed because I couldn't get any good photos. And sometimes putting too much pressure on yourself to make good photos while you're traveling, it's going to be a little bit counterproductive is that you're actually going to be more stressed, more exhausted, more tired, more frustrated. And you're actually not going to make end up making that much um, good photos. And this is my practical tip is if you're if you go on a trip for like a week and you're evil, even able to make one photo that you consider portfolio worthy, you've essentially uh, done your job. Um, for me, like even being here in Mexico City, it's been really um, nice just being able to practice my Spanish because obviously I'm not a native Spanish speaker. And the nice thing about speaking in a foreign language is it actually gives you a chance to be more curious again, to be a child again, for you to see the world in a, a new uh, a new way. And because like even for myself in English, because I've, I have so much mastery in English at this point, I'm maybe a little bit more like hesitant to ask um, questions that might be perceived as stupid or childlike. Whereas I being here in Mexico City, I'm like kind of a big kid again. And also uh, when I was living in Vietnam, I'm able to act a fool because I don't know the language and therefore I'm able to even ask things where like simple things you can say. It's like, oh, por qué, why? Or por qual when you're in France. Or you can say dice out if you're in Vietnam. And that's actually a good way to learn a foreign language too, is that just learn a few uh, catchphrases, like basic phrases. And then you could just learn how to say why, like por qué. So it's like, oh, you know, te gusta vivir en Ciudad de México? Do you like to live in Mexico City? And then let's say the Uber driver says, yeah. Then you could say por qué. And then just kind of listen to what they say and then try to mimic or parrot what they say. And I think this is actually a very effective way to, to learn a, a new language and to, to practice um, essentially thinking outside the box. Uh, other tips when you're uh, traveling abroad and stuff like that, I would just recommend just carrying one, one backpack or one bag. I, I generally recommend, um, I think the Think Tank makes the best bags for travel photography. So the, the Think Tank perception, um, 
15 I think is the one I use, the smaller one for, for a long time. And then once I started doing more video vlogging, then I have the Think Tank, Think Tank uh, Perception Pro. It's, uh, it's a little bit bigger, but it seems to be able to carry all my necessities. And yeah, like when you're traveling, doing photography, uh, use this opportunity to talk to people. If you're, if you just, and I'll also, I think this is another thing too, is I'll allow yourself to do more cool, cool touristy things. And I think uh, this is another thing is when you're shooting, uh, doing photography and doing travel, only engage in activities that you're personally interested in. So for example, if you like to do touristy things when you're in, like, if you really want to see the pyramids in Mexico City, obviously I recommend you to go, but don't feel like you need to do anything while traveling abroad because other people told you that you should. Just honestly, it's, it's all a matter of following your gut, following your instincts. Uh, don't feel like you always need to wake up super, super early in the morning either because What's the point of waking up at like 4 a.m. if you're going to be exhausted for the rest of the day? So um, know that even with travel photography, the tempo is really important. Is don't feel like you have to be going out 100% all uh, some of the, all the the whole day. Sit down, have a cup of coffee, you know, buy a bottle of water at the store, and go at a pace that tempo which accords with you. And yeah, just follow your gut, um, follow your instincts. Only go to neighborhoods that you really like. This is another thing that I've personally benefited from is rather than trying to spend your time to see all the neighborhoods in the city, latch onto one or two neighborhoods that you find very, very interesting and spend more time in fewer neighborhoods. And it's to me, it's better to get to know a few neighborhoods very, very well. So for example, here in Mexico City, uh, my favorite neighborhood is uh, Roma Norte, which is, it feels so European. It feels kind of like more Parisian in the sense that people are out. It's like it's like a very hipster neighborhood. People are out like having cups of coffee on the the streets, and it's really relaxed. And I just kind of like the art, the vibes, the uh, the people there. And so me and Cindy, we keep going back to Roma Norte. And from um from the Doctores area, it's only about like maybe a 15, 20 minute walk. So it's a nice walk as well. So yeah, I think uh, even when we're walking around the neighborhood, on the walk to the neighborhood, I have the camera. I'm just uh, snapping some photos as I go. And while I'm there, I'm just walking around, chatting to people, snapping photos, making videos and stuff like that. And I think just the most important thing is to just enjoy your travels. Don't treat traveling like some sort of toilsome labor. Um, it's actually funny because even the word uh, travel, I think in um, French is travailler, which means literally to engage in an arduous, painful, uncomfortable thing. Because obviously in the past, to travel across the Atlantic Ocean was not a pleasant thing. But now we've kind of turned to this um, this luxury, you know, enlightened person life thing. But um, essentially create your own lifestyle for yourself, uh, follow your own tempo. I also generally think that um, because your personality is obviously different from, from me, it's from different from anybody else. Uh, generally speaking, the advice, hola. Generally speaking, the advice you're gonna get from other people might not always be the best advice. I think the best way to ask, uh, actually ask for people's advice is if you're gonna to travel to a new city or a new country that you haven't been to yet, don't ask people what to do because they don't know what you like to do. It's probably more effective to ask people what not to do. It's uh, one Nassim Taleb calls via negativa. So by telling, if you go to France for the first, or Paris for the first time, ask the locals or friends, say, what should I not do in Paris? aka see the Eiffel Tower and stuff like that. And this way it'll, it'll save you a lot of time from uh, doing stuff that's uh, not that interesting. Anyways, I'm starting to babble on too much. What are your personal thoughts and tr uh, tips and tricks and uh, life hacks on traveling, photography and so forth? Uh, what are some things you actually recommend people not to do while traveling? So even my biggest advice is that don't look on TripAdvisor. I think it's, uh, you just end up getting suckered to doing the stupid touristy things which are generally overpriced. I would actually recommend when you're traveling abroad in the local uh, city, uh, ask your Uber driver or people working at your Airbnb or hotel, whatever. Ask them what they like to do in their free time and generally you'll get better things to do. Gen not always, but generally speaking, what locals like to do, it's actually generally more fun and interesting. And also, um, when you go to like a fancy bougie restaurant, don't feel like you have to order everything on the menu. Just order uh, one entree, one appetizer, stuff like that and just kind of enjoy yourself um, and yeah so anyways what's your tips and advice uh, leave a uh, comment down below and uh, hopefully we'll share some more turbo thoughts on photography live travel and so forth thanks a lot for watching guys peace out